Welcome, everyone. We're so pleased you could join us this evening. My name is Sandy Barr. I'm the chapter director for Sierra Club's Grand Canyon chapter. That's the Arizona chapter. And I use she, her pronouns. And I live here in central Phoenix. These are the traditional lands of the Akamal Atum and Pipash. And uh, very excited tonight to have this program on the Environmental Protection Agency's new draft rule to cut carbon pollution from power plants. Uh, according to experts, power plants release about a quarter of the climate pollution generated in the United States, and they're a significant amount of Arizona's climate pollution. And the EPA's proposed rule will help cut climate pollution from power plants and provide additional protections for communities most affected by pollution from power plants. But of course, we need to ensure that it's the strongest rule possible, and that's where you come in. Today, we're going to learn about why the rule is important, what, what's in it, and some key talking points plus more about how to testify. And we have some excellent presenters and also a great translator here today. So you're going to hear from Maddie Page. Uh, she's the Deputy Director of Government Affairs with the Climate Action Campaign. Hazel Chandler, the Arizona Coordinator with Moms Clean Air Force. And then translation this evening is provided by Alondra Morales, and uh, she's the climate justice organizer with Poder Latinx. And with that, I am going to start uh, sharing my screen. Right. Too many. Okay, and uh, I mentioned the climate action campaign, uh, a number of the organizations that are participating tonight are part of the climate action campaign table, Poder Latinx, Moms Clean Air Force, EDF Action, Arizona Interfaith Power and Light, and Sierra Club. Just a couple of logistics. This says welcome to chat, but the chat isn't working. I, I don't know why, but um, please use the Q&A uh, for asking your questions uh, this evening. And um, that, uh, you know, and if you have a comment and it's not really a question, that's fine to put it in the Q&A as well. Uh, also, if you uh, would like translation, there's a little symbol at the bottom. It looks like a globe. Just click on that and you can choose English or Spanish and uh, we'll hear it in the language of your choice. Uh, I was going to encourage you to introduce yourself in the chat, but we'll skip that part again because the, the, the chat is not uh, uh, working right now. We do have some community agreements. We like to always start our meetings with, with agreements, engaging with kindness, letting folks know that racism, misogyny, xenophobia, and hate aren't tolerated. Uh, we all are working to be actively anti-racist. We'll define our acronyms and any unfamiliar terms and uh, encourage people to use the plus plus uh, if your uh, something resonates with you. Um, again, you'll have to do that in the Q&A, not the chat. And uh, with that, I will turn it over uh, to Maddie and she's going to lay out why this rule is important, what's in it and provide some talking points. Maddie, please take it away. Thanks, Sandy, and really good to be with all of you tonight. Thanks for having me. Um, like Sandy said, I'm Maddie Page. I'm the Deputy Director of Government Affairs for the Climate Action Campaign. Um, I'm based in DC, 
but I spent the first 18 years of my life in Southern Arizona, grew up in Tucson, go Badgers. Um, and I, um, so anyway, I love, I love getting to be with the Arizona table for any bit of time that I can. Um, but um, wanted to talk to you all today and um, share a little bit more details on the proposed rule, like Sandy said. Um, but before we get into that, just wanted to talk a little bit about what we're up against. Obviously, you are all here tonight, so I don't need to tell you that we're facing a climate crisis. You know, climate change is considered the greatest public health threat of the 21st century and leads to poor air quality, which exacerbates a variety of health issues. Um, including respiratory disease, heart disease, and other illnesses that are caused by toxic air pollution from power plants. And climate change is also driving more frequent and intense extreme weather events, from hurricanes to heat waves to wildfires to flooding. Communities across the country are experiencing the impacts of the climate crisis firsthand. Um, I put on this slide a picture from the Bighorn Fire um, in the Catalinas in Tucson, since that's where I grew up. And I grew up, you know, watching those mountains um, be on fire every couple of years um, and, and having to worry about, um, you know, my community and if the, you know, favorite trails or places I liked to enjoy um, might be destroyed for forever. So, you know, our solutions for pollution campaign at CAC calls on the Biden administration to carry out its responsibilities under our nation's bedrock environmental laws, like the Clean Air Act. And you know, by advancing about 20 administrative actions across the federal agencies, the administration can get on track to meet its climate goals and cut pollution in half. Um, in the next decade. So we're really counting on the administration to do this um, and to finalize them by the beginning of next year um, so that we're on track. And the good news is, is that last month, um, and you can go to the next slide, um, the administration, um, EPA, um, proposed um, the first ever limits on climate pollution from power plants. This is a huge opportunity. Um, without this rule, um, our climate goals are, with, are not within reach. So you can see here on this chart, um, unfortunately it looks like the access at the bottom has been cut off, um, but that first kind of tranche of um, the 68, 77 and 78%, those are what we could get to by 2030 with you know, the Inflation Reduction Act or with the Inflation Reduction Act plus the carbon rules, that's the 111, which is what we're talking about tonight, or the Inflation Reduction Act plus these rules plus other public health rules like soot um, and the mercury and air toxic standards. So you can see you know, we're within striking distance at 78% if we get all those rules done. Um, and so that's why this kind of broad campaign targeting many pollutants is so critical. Um, and we just need these rules in order to, to get us on track. Um, so you can go to the next slide. And these rules are important because like Sandy said, power plants are the second largest source of pollution in this country. They're responsible for about a quarter of the carbon emissions. And right now that is unlimited. Like they, there are no limits on the carbon pollution from power plants. So this new standard would require fossil fuel power plants to reduce their emissions for the first time. So it's a really critical step forward. That said, we are calling on some pieces of the rule to be strengthened. Basically, we want EPA to do more and do more faster. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit later on um, in the slides. Um, but let's dig in on what the rule does include. If you wanna to go to the next slide, please. So what's in the proposal? Um, the proposal includes three types of fossil fuel power plants. The first one um, is existing coal plants. These plants 
must decrease their carbon pollution by 90% by 2030 um, if they don't have a plan for retirement. And then for plans that have um, planned, plants that have planned retirements by 2040, um, they, um, are, they have less stringent, um, they have less stringent um, outcomes because of this rule. Then number two, this rule covers existing gas plants. Um, that said, it only covers large baseload gas plants that would have to make reductions in their emissions. Um, and then the third type of source that's covered with this proposed rule um, would be new gas plants, which is really critical. Um, and these rules vary based on how often the plants run. That's kind of the big picture of what's included in the rule. I'll say that um, plants, like how plants achieve the emissions reduction are left up to the states and the plants themselves to decide. So there's an entire implementation process that will, will take place after this rule is finalized. The rule proposes technology that can get the plants there, such as burning clean hydrogen or carbon capture and storage, but it doesn't dictate that those are the ways that the plants or states have to meet the standards. So, you know, other ways that plants could meet the standards would be by running less frequently and therefore emitting less. Um, or they could switch to cleaner sources like solar or wind, or they could retire their plants. As the climate action campaign, our goal is to move the US economy to 100% clean renewable energy future. That's obviously what we wanna see. Um, and I'll just also note that some of the modeling does show that these rules will spur fossil fuel plant retirements since renewables are cheaper compared to some of the emissions control technology. And you wanna to go to the next slide. All right, um, next slide, please. So um, some of the benefits from EPA's analysis from this proposal, um, EPA, um, is projecting that these rules would slash carbon pollution by 617 million metric tons. That's equivalent to the annual emissions over half the passenger fleet currently on the road. So it's a really big deal. Number two, that, the, that these um, standards, if finalized, would provide up to 85 billion in net climate benefits and public health benefits. And then on an annual basis, that these rules would avoid 1,300 premature deaths, 800 hospital and emergency room visits, more than 300,000 asthma attacks, 38,000 school absences, and 66,000 lost work days in 2030 alone. So, you know, benefits of these standards in terms of public health and emissions are obviously really great. And then also, like I said before, reducing carbon pollution can keep us on track to meet our overall um, Paris Climate Accord goals and President Biden's climate goals. Um, all right, then I wanna talk a little bit, like I, I mentioned, you know, these are important step forward, um, but we do wanna see some improvements in the final rule. And like I said, these are such a critical step forward because right now plants are allowed to pollute unlimited amounts of carbon pollution. So really any tamping down is important. Um, but here's what we're calling on EPA to do. The first one um, is that you know, we want EPA to achieve greater pollution reductions from more sources on the fastest timelines possible. And that means including more plants that are covered in the rule and requiring greater emissions reductions from those plants. Number two, it also um, means speeding up the timelines for compliance on all sources. So all three of those sources that I mentioned. And then finally, we are calling on the administration to take action for community protections and input, including rigorous monitoring, verification, enforcement of violations and engagement with communities, both on the safeguards and on the individual projects in their communities.
Um, I'll just leave it with a few um, notes before I pass it over to Hazel. You know, we know that this is really, this proposal has fired up the opposition. They're gonna be fighting tooth and nail to keep the status quo and be able to keep polluting. Within hours of the rule getting proposed, Republican senators um, in the US Senate and Manchin were decrying the rule and had already threatened that they would work to overturn it. And attorneys generals and Republican attorneys generals across the, the country were on Fox News presenting this new proposal that as we know, would make critical advancements for public health. They were presenting it as a war on the American people. And a couple of things that we're seeing too in online um, content, you know, it started to move in a couple of directions in right-wing spaces. One, this idea that there's not enough renewable energy to make up for, for the deficit if these plants go offline, which we know is not true. And number two, the idea that these standards are just unachievable. Um, which is also not true. So I just want to say and leave you with the fact that that kind of fierce opposition that we're up against really makes your organizing all the more critical. We need to defend against the fossil fuel industry attempts to weaken these rules and more, you know, even more than that, we need to push them further to be as protective um, as possible and even stronger. So we expect a robust public comment period that kicked off last week. There will be lots of opportunities to engage, some of which Hazel will highlight um, in a few minutes here. And we really want the public experts, the scientific community to weigh in. And we hope that the president and administrator Regan will heed these calls and finalize the strongest protections from carbon pollution from power plants possible. So um, I'm happy to stay for some questions, but I'll turn it over to Hazel. Hi, um, I think that Sandy's going to uh, start my slides. Um, I'm Hazel Chandler with Mom's Clean Air Force. I also am on the National Board of Elders Climate Action. And uh, as most of you know, I, I head up the uh, Arizona Climate Action Campaign, our <clears throat> Action Coalition, uh, of which a number of you are members. Um, I'm going to talk, and some of this is maybe repetitive, but um, and, um, talk on uh, the actual public comment period and uh, why and how we testify. Uh, there's nothing more important than making our voices heard. And Arizona is considered rock stars because in the last bunch of hearings to the EPA, we have had a major um, presence. Um, I think we had like 15 one time from the, from Arizona that I recognize names up. Um, we've had 10 on others and, and um, we frequently get comments on how amazing the people from Arizona are um, uh, on this. Um, on this one uh, right now, it looks like we've got probably at least 10 or 12 signed up. Um, unfortunately, it looks like they filled all their slots. They are still accepting registration for uh, people that want to testify, but there's no time frames left. But I think that, you know, they've added a, already added a third day, and I think it's going to be closed very quickly. So if you have an interest in testifying and you have not signed up, please do so, uh, you know, immediately after this, um, and during the while we have comments, I'll put the link in into the um, um, in, into the question Q and A. I usually say chat. Um, Sandy, next slide. I I want to talk just a little bit about how the EPA regulatory process works because this is some where some people get really uh, confused. Um, the EPA pro proposes a regulation. Uh, they came out on the 11th of May with this particular regulation. Um, the, um, the step two, the EPA public com 
comments and the issue of a rule. It will begin the public com comments are uh, starting on the 13th, 14th, and 15th of June. Um, I believe it's open uh, today to be able to post um, comments directly into the Federal Register. And with our follow-up materials, we'll make sure you have all the information on how to do that. Um, our comment period will close on July 24th. So between now and July 24th, we need to get as many people testifying as possible. We need to get as many written comments as possible, including it's really important to get uh, public comments from elected officials and, and people in our state and local governments as well. Um, once that call closes, they will begin to uh, to sort of to work on what the final rule will be. And we expect that this will probably come into being codified as as final rules somewhere uh, very early in 2024. Next next slide. I'll leave this just a second for our, our Spanish speaking. Next slide. This is a chance to make our voices heard. Um, and I, I've been concerned about climate change, global warming since my son was much younger than this little girl in this picture. And um, it, it's getting worse every year. And now I have a great grandchild that's about that, that age, or a little, little younger than that. And we just, all of us have to, have to be the voice for these children because they can't be that voice for, for themselves. Um, this is our chance to influence environmental standards, protect the, the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the soil that we grow our food. Next slide. Um, I think I talked about most of this, but you know, once a school uh, rule has been published, it's published in the Federal Register and has a docket number. Um, comment periods usually last between 30 and 90 days. We actually have 60 days from when it was officially uh, put into the public record. Um, they have actually sent out the link to the public hearing. Um, the te your testimony is usually between three and five minutes. We have been told that this one will be four minutes. But um, I have had, um, I've had situations where they've told us four or five minutes and it's ended up three minutes when, when the hearing actually starts. So be prepared to, uh, you know, either, either make your, your testimony shorter or be prepared to cut your testimony at the last minute or have a, a section you could leave out um, on the fly. They, they monitor those that time. And with a couple of the hearings that I've testified in recently, when it actually, you go to your three minute slot, it cuts you off completely, even if you're midterm. Uh, a couple of the others allowed you to finish your sentence and then told you you needed to stop. But it's it's very important that um, that you you stick to the time. Verbal testimony goes into the written record, but you, I also really encourage you to submit your, your comments either. Um, you can provide them to me and I'll submit them to the uh, regulations.gov under the docket number or, um, or, or you can do it yourself. But this is, I think, pretty important that we also put it in the docket because when you're testifying, sometimes they don't get everything exactly right. So next slide.
Next slide. Okay, so we need to go through about how to write your testimony. Um, it's just let me back up a little bit. Um, I firmly believe that the best thing is to write out your testimony ahead of time and practice, practice, practice. Um, you, you are encouraged to read your testimony when you give uh, the testimony. Um, it makes it a whole lot easier via Zoom. Um, if you if you don't follow your uh, written testimony exactly, that's fine. Uh, that's another reason for submitting a copy. It should include um, several sections. The first is the introduction, and then your personal reason for testifying. And this is probably the most important thing you can do: is find your story. Uh, you know, and relate how this relates to you, you, you your health, people you work with, people you love, uh, your children, or um, whatever the link is, it's really important to find your story. We'll talk a little more about that. And uh, then describe the, the benefits of strong standards and then your conclusion. Next slide. This is an example, back, uh, back up one. This is an example of an introduction. Uh, you can change it a little bit, um, but, um, and there's a, actually another introduction in, in the Moms Clean Air Force toolkit that, that, um, that will be sent out with this as well, and you can look at both of them. Um, thank you. Um, something in the in the neighborhood. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Identify yourself. They're going to ask you to spell your name. So, um, you know, my name is Hazel Chandler, H A Z E L, so on and so forth. Uh, you can include your job title or where you're from. I really encourage you to say you're from Arizona, and. You know, if you want to talk about any other expertise and who you're affiliated with, um, you know, we've had a lot of people talk, uh, testifying on behalf of moms, and you're welcome to do that. But any group that you're part of, you can identify with. Um, and then something about, I'm here to express my strong support of the Biden administration's proposed standards to cut pollution from coal and natural gas fired power plants. Um, as we know, fossil fuel power plants are one of the largest sources of carbon pollution uh, driving climate change. And uh, here in Arizona, these standards will be critical to tackling climate change and cleaning up power plants. EPA's proposal is critically important to step forward and I encourage the agency to achieve the greatest pollution reductions uh, from more sources on the fastest possible timeline in recognition of the threat of climate change. I urge you to move swiftly to finalize the strongest climate pollution rule. The, the, the reason I suggested the introduction that's in the MOMS uh, Clean Air Force Toolkit is it's a little shorter. This is a little bit too wordy, um, I think, and to allow to really tell your story. So feel free to, you know, change it, but something similar to this so that you make it very clear what your, um, um, your, um, what you want them to do. Um, this is it in Spanish. And I wish I could read it, but I can read a few words. Okay, next slide. The most important part of your testimony and what the EPA staff that are there to listen to will remember at the end of the day is why it's important to you. Use examples from your own life to, sh to show why you think regulatory action is absolutely critical. Bring in your kids, bring in your 
you know, you can talk about uh, impacts on your kids. You can talk about impacts on older pe uh, people, your grandparents, your aunts, uncles, yourselves. Um, you, they need to hear your specific, um, your specific concerns as it relates to you. They hear the talking points all the time, but they need to hear the story. Um, I really highly encourage you to, to uh, adapt this to show how climate change is impacting our community. Here in Arizona, heat is a big one. Uh, you know, there, we, could, we could probably all talk about heat and never really repeat it too much. You know, how does it impact our children's ability to go out and play? How does it impact uh, people working outside? Um, how, you know, heat is sending, uh, causing 425 deaths last year. Um, the official Maricopa County uh, 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 figures um, and sending <clears throat> hundreds of hundreds of and thousands of people to the emergency rooms. You can talk about that in communities. I, I know Peggy's on on from and and uh, <clears throat> David Myers is on from Sedona. Uh, you guys live under the threat of of wildfires and 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 resulting floods like every single day during the summertime. Uh, you can talk about that and how it impacts you and your life. Um, we have had people experiencing huge floods, wildfires, drought, um, extreme heat all over our state. And this is, uh, the climate change is impacting us right now and in a very profound way. Next slide. Um, okay. Okay, next slide. Uh, did we miss something up? Oh, you, uh, you're going to get two toolkits. You're going to get one from Moms Clean Air Force and one from Climate Action Campaign. And... <clears throat> As you start to craft your, your testimony, incorporate one or two or three relevant points. Uh, remember, you only have three minutes, four minutes at the most. And, um, and so a couple talking points uh, are important, but please don't overdo. And don't worry about including highly technical information. Uh, there's going to be a lot of experts that are going to be doing that. Um, moms is recommending to us right now that we we try to avoid doing too much talking about climate uh, about carbon capture and hydrogen because it's such a complicated issue. If you really want to do that, let's talk about it. But um, I would I would be a little. We can go to the next slide. Um, the Spanish version of this one, I would be a little hesitant in um, doing doing uh, too much talking about that because it is so complicated and can tend to be controversial. So um, I would I would stay with just very personal and the impacts it has on you and your family and your community. Next slide. And then in the end, you reiterate your position and thank the panel. Um, this is an example. That's why I'm excited that President Biden and EPA Administrator Michael Reagan have proposed new limits on power plant climate pollution. They must finalize the strongest possible standard to put the United States on track to meet President's pledge to cut climate pollution in half by 2030. Thank you for the opportunity to test. Um, in my conclusions, I always kind of try to uh, do something that kind of personalizes to, to my story. Um, you know, 
sometimes I I've told the story of my new great grandchild Ava, and I literally pers personalized it and said, you know, I want to thank thank you for giving um, you know, for these these rules that will help. Ava and all the other children have a, a great life or something like that makes it a little more personal and I, I find that the um, it seems to to be better received. Um, you probably won't get much feedback from the EPA people that, that are uh, in the hearing but occasionally they will respond. Um, they have the ability to ask questions, but I've never seen them ask anything other than um, if you've cited a study, they might ask you to make sure that that study is part of the public uh, docket. Um, so don't be worried that they're gonna ask you a lot of questions that you can't answer because that just isn't gonna happen. Um, I think I'm on my 12th or 13th uh, testimony in the last year and a half, and um, I, I, that's about the only question that I've ever seen is the the question about uh, will you put the the study into the uh, docket. Next, next slide. Again. Three to five minutes. Uh, there's a formula. One one minute is usually about 150 words. So a three minute comment, 450. Four minutes, 600. Five minutes, 750. Um, write down your comments. Practice in front of the mirror. Um, I really would love to have you share it with myself or one of the climate action table people here. Um, I often get Moms Clean Air Force uh, involved to, to review comments as well. And uh, often they can take a, a really good set of, of comments and turn it into a really great set of comments. And so if uh, we would really like to <clears throat> have those ready for review by uh, next Thursday, which I believe is the 8th, and I also would really like to have a quote from each of the people that are testifying in Arizona's uh, comments. And we're going to put together uh, a packet with the, um, the quotes and share it with um, some of the press in the state, especially um, the Arizona Republic, which did an amazing story. Um, uh, recently. Next slide. Next slide. Um, you can bring photos. Um, Often I've seen people bring like a photo of their children or their grandchildren and hold it um, part of uh, as part of the testimony. We have we have have had a lot of really amazing kids, including this one that testifies testifies at various um, hearing hearings. Uh, this is Liz Brand's daughter, and she's she's just amazing. Uh, she has so her own artwork in the background, but she also has uh, her written testimony uh, is showing. Um, you can hold a baby. Um, you know, or you can have a picture of, of pushing um, a baby in the car seat. Uh, it's really great to have uh, teenagers testify. Um, College students, high school students, junior high students, um, they, are, they are all wet, incredibly well-spoken and, and do a great job. And, you know, if you've got somebody with asthma, sometimes holding the asthma inhaler really does have a, a big impact as well. So next slide. Next slide. Uh, 
I think we probably don't have a lot of, of slots to ask families and friends um, to um, testify at the at the the hearing in um, on the 13th, 14th, and 15th. But I really want to encourage everyone here to ask your family and friends, especially ones you know that have a compelling story about how climate and climate change and air quality is impacting them. Uh, encourage them at least to, to sign that sign a petition, um, but or a post postcard or whatever that we're 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 doing, but. Um, also reminding them that their voice matters and that they can put written comments just like similar to your testimony right into the docket and it gets the same uh consideration that those that testify in um in the um the the live hearings um be sure be sure to know that uh it's a lot less uh, intimidating than um, than it sounds. Um, you have a written statement. You're reading it into a Zoom call, so it's it's really very easy. And um, if you if if you signed up and for some reason you can't um, testify, um, they will allow you to um, change the person's name to someone else. And um, Moms Clean Air Force staff is really, really good at, at helping out with that. So if you want to let me know um, about that, I we can do it. Um, I think that's, you know, pretty much what's going on. Again, it's fun. It's a really great way to make your voice heard and I really encourage all of you to participate. That's it, Sandy. We talked about what it's like to testify. Yes. So we won't go with that, but um, we read definitely want to thank you and we're going to take questions, I think now. Yep, yep, we'll, we'll take questions. Uh, there, I know there are some in the um, uh, Q and A already. I was just gonna, going to go ahead and add Maddie back on to the spotlight. There we go. Uh, I answer Peggy's qu that question about the overturn in the courts. If you if you would repeat the question, if you're going to do it that way, okay. Hazel, so everyone knows if that'd yeah, be great. Is, okay. Is there a rule that is this rule less likely to be overturned in the courts this time? Um, this this rule has been very carefully, with lots of legal assistance, been uh, reviewed uh, just for that, that it making sure that it is absolutely clean um, alignment with the Clean um, Air Act, and that you know basically. The, the requirements within that all fall within that Clean Air Act. So we anticipate that, you know, they've already done a lot of work and then there's some some ways the rules could could have been stronger in some areas, but they they felt they couldn't do that because of the chances that it could get overturned in the courts. Yeah, and I'll just add that, you know, the Clean Air Act still um, despite that, that ruling does require um, EPA to regulate greenhouse gas pollution from the power sector. And so they actually do um, have, um, they, they, they have to set these standards. Um, and like Hazel said, they, they were crafted in such a way um, that, that they should be um, compliant and um, you know, basically with the with the clean power plan, the Supreme Court said that the the power switching or um, uh, you know was not acceptable, and, but that in, that in order to set these limits, you would have to use technology at the plant itself 
So that's what you might hear people talk about inside the fence line. Um, and so that's what um, EPA has to do and that's what they've done um, with this rule. Um, and I think just another interesting point is that, you know, even after the Supreme Court decision last summer, Congress did pass the Inflation Reduction Act. And in the Inflation Reduction Act, they actually put language in there reconfirming um, the intent of the Clean Air Act and expressly saying um, that, that carbon pollution from power plants um, and or greenhouse gas emissions would, that would need to be um, that would need to be um, regulated there. And so that was a, a further um, development and even strengthens the case further. Great. Thank you. Were there any other questions? If you have other questions, you can either put them in the Q&A or raise your hand and I can let you talk. Uh, I don't see any hands. Oh, Melanie. Yes. I just wanted to add that it's, I think it's important to note that Part of the reason, and maybe this was covered, but part of the reason that we need to, to comment is because industry has lobbyists and has a lot of influence with the EPA, and they will definitely be trying to prevent standards that they need to follow. Yeah, for a lot of people may remember the clean power plan, and maybe uh Put a lot of time and energy into that and so yeah the industry was successful uh in um <clears throat> eliminating that through the legal challenges um like was said earlier this this rule seems like it's pretty tight but also without a lot of support that you know rather than strengthening in it the low way we want them to they could actually weaken which would be the absolute wrong direction so uh all of your voices our voices are super important i did also want to add we are going to we'll have a recording of this we'll send the slides out um to everyone who registered and then we will have some links to uh, some toolkits. I know uh, Hazel mentioned Moms Clean Air Force, but I did want to mention that I know, and, and the Climate Action Campaign, I know that the other um, partner uh, groups have toolkits. I know we do, and uh, also Arizona Interfaith Power and Light has some other materials that they're going to be sharing. So um, you'll, there's, there will be lots of uh, backup for you, if, however you want to get involved, whether you want to testify uh, orally or send written comments, or maybe you'd want to do a comment writing party with your friends and family. Uh, so anyway. We will uh, have uh, postcards. And uh, if anybody wants postcards, let us know. Um, this would be great to take to like 4th of July events and other events that you're doing. Um, maybe not so much in Arizona because or in Phoenix because it's too hot, but other parts of the state, you know, it's pretty nice over those days. So if you want, let me know. I, I'm going to be picking those up probably within a week and I can get them out to you as quickly as possible, probably by the end of next week. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I was just thinking, you know, one other thing that I wanted to flag um, is that you were already seeing some of the opposition from Congress too, which, which could have an impact, like you say, Sandy, on weakening the rules or um, kind of, killing the administration and, and making them too afraid to, to put forward the strongest version or even the proposed versions that they have. Um, the Energy and Commerce Committee next week is holding a hearing on the standards um, where um, to, and it, it, you know, it's led by the new Republican House majority. And so we're expecting this to be kind of a free for all of all the attacks you might expect. 
Um, and, and we really are expecting to see hearings like that taking place at every chance they get. So, um, you know, this comment period is, is really important. And then I'll just say like, we'll have many months between when the comment period closes in July until it's finalized where we'll see the attacks continue to come and you know hearings in Congress. So we'll need to keep making our voices heard and pushing back on that. You know, right. thanks, man. Uh, go I, ahead. I just want to say this, you know, there's there's important things that happen, but this is one of the most important rural packages that has come before before us because it is actually regulating the greenhouse gases on power plants for the first time. We also have two um, um, other really important regulations, the clean car and the clean truck ones that are ready, that are available for comment right now uh, that also regulate the greenhouse gases coming out of the tailpipes of the cars and trucks. And those are extremely important too. These are these are things that will allow us to to get to these um, aggressive goals that we need to be in by 2030 to make sure our kids uh, that we don't pass by the 1.5 and our kids have a livable future. Actually, we're probably gonna go to two at least, but um, we can keep pushing and then make it very urgent. Well, I don't see any more questions and uh, we're at time. So thank you again, everybody. Thank our panelists, Maddie Page, Hazel Chandler, and a special thanks to Alondra Morales, she has been translating everything and is probably um, usually when you go for an hour, you have a couple of people switch off. So I just want to um, thank her. Uh, Mil gracias. Uh, oh, David Myers raised his hand here at the end. So let me see if I can get to him and. Um, where to go? There it is. Sorry, David. Okay, there we go. You should be able to talk. Mm, you're still muted, so uh, I think you have to unmute. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll, uh, okay. I just wanna make a quick comment that about the fact that these are the first regulations. The reason that um, we had some regulations in the sense that there were Eastern states that sued the Midwest for power plant emissions and successfully uh, squelched a lot of them such that acid rain is no longer a problem in the East Coast. I'm not saying we don't need these regulations, but the the action was taken at the state level rather than at the federal level to address at least Midwestern and uh, North Central power plants that were blowing into Pennsylvania, New York, and New England. Yeah. Yeah, there's a long, uh, long history of achieving emissions reductions by um, filing lawsuits to uh, force the the utilities to do what they should have done anyway. But um, an acid rain is one of the success stories. So it is uh, noteworthy. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, well, with that, uh, we'll go ahead and call it a wrap. And again, thank you everyone for being here and uh, have fun testifying. Uh, know you're making a difference. All right. Thanks, everybody.